this video, we're going to cover three different iterations of the contains function. So contains, contains string, and contains string exact. We're going to go through each one of them and their differences with some examples. All of that and more. So without further ado, let's get started. Hi, my name is Fanana and welcome to the Solutions Abroad YouTube channel where we cover tips, tricks and best practices when working with Power BI. I upload new videos every week so make sure you hit that subscribe button and the bell icon to get notified when a new one is out. So let's jump right into this example that I prepared for you today. We have just one table here, a products table that just has two columns, category and product. Let's start with the contains because that's probably the easiest one to explain. Um, before we go through the example, let's go through the documentation as always. So let's look at the description here for the contains. It says it returns true if values for all third columns exists or are contained in those columns. Otherwise, the function returns false. So it basically returns a true or false depending on what the column and the value you feed in the parameters here. So looking at the parameters here, it asks for three things as a minimum. It asks for the table of where the data comes from, the column that you want to search, and the value within that column that you want to search. And I want you to pay attention to the syntax here of, uh, of our contains function. It has the box brackets, which means that you can have as many column value pairs as you want in order to refine your search. We'll go back to that in a second. So for now, let's go and try to use an example here just to make things a lot easier to visualize. So here we have a table that has the product names and let's say we want to search for a specific product in this list. Let's say we want to search for um, Jack's New England Clam Chowder. Now it's easy for us to find because uh, this list that we have here is not so big, but just imagine having to work with a bigger table that you won't be able to scroll through as easily as this. This is where you'd be using the contains function. What we can do first is we can try to create a new measure here and we'll just try to look for I just name it contains we'll create a new measure here contains and we're gonna start typing just the contains uh, function here so it asks for three things as I said it asks for the table we just have one table here and we're saying look for the name in the products uh, column in this products table that we have here and then the value that you want to search. Now let's try to type this exactly. Jack's New England clam chowder. So we'll close that. And just to recap what this will do is it will look through the product name. It will look for a specific uh, value here, the one that we've specified here. And if it does find this value, it will return true. Otherwise, it will return as false. So let's hit enter and let's put this in a card just so that we can visualize how it would look like. So here with the card, you will see that it returns true. So one thing to bear in mind when using the contains function here in DAX, it, the value that you put in here needs to match exactly in the value of the column that you're looking for. So let's say, for example, instead of Jack's New England clam chowder, we're just looking for anything that uh, just has clam chowder, right? So we'll just remove that and say, just give me anything um, that has clam chowder. This won't work. And you'll see that it will return false because it needs to match exactly as what you put in the value here. So we'll I'll show you a different version of how you'd be able to search using that kind of logic. Another thing that the documentation doesn't tell you is that the contains function is not case sensitive. So if we just bring back the full view here just to show you that it's true, even if I let's say uppercase the clam chowder at the very end here as long as the uh, spelling and the characters are in the right place, um, it will return true. So if we look back at the documentation here, as I mentioned, because there are box brackets, it means you can add as many column value pairs as you want to refine your search even further. So let's have a look at trying that um, scenario here. So we have now the product name and we're looking for the clam chowder from our product name column. 
And now let's try something else. Let's try to add uh, another column. So let's say um, it needs to match. You need to be able to find the product name and the category name that is something. So at the moment, we'll try to add seafood here. So we'll say hit enter and you'll see it will still give us true. Now let's go through the logic of this function. So first, what it will do is it will look for the product name here. It will find it, it will look for that value here. And then from that value, it will then look for the category name. And if the category name matches as well, then this function will return true. Um, one thing to bear in mind is that at one row needs to fulfill all of the categories that you've put in your contains. Otherwise, it will return as false. So what do I mean by that? So let's say we just put confections here. Um, and confections, as you can see, is a category in our table, but it doesn't match with the um, clam chowder. So it's uh, I, we know that clam chowder is a seafood category. So if we hit enter there. You'll see that even though both of these uh, values in these columns is valid because they are in the table because they don't match both in the same row in any of the instances it will return false so if you've used contains in the sql context before and you're looking for something that sort of works the same way you have an option to use something called the contain strings so first if we look at the contain string documentation you'll see that it asks for just two things it asks for the within text which is the text that you want to search into and then the text that you want to search within it so uh, it's like sort of like a partial search if you're looking for something that has or contains a substring of text this is what you would use and again like the contains function it returns true if the text exists in the uh, within text otherwise it will return false so let's go back to our example here and this time instead of creating a measure let's create a new column just so that i can visualize it to you on a row level so we'll create a new column here and we will say uh, contain string and let's start try to type this function here so it asks for two things, so the within text and the find text. So let's say we want to find any products that have chef in its name somewhere, right? So the first thing is we'll uh, say look for it in the product name and within the product name itself, look for something that has chef. Okay, so we'll close that and you will see that a lot of them will return false. And if we just uh, organize or uh, filter this to just the truth, so you'll see it gives us two products. And these two products return true because they have chef somewhere in their product name. So exactly what we are trying to achieve with the contain string function. So like the contains function, the value that you put here is also not case sensitive. And you can also use wildcards if you know how to use them. So you'll see here, you can use the asterisk if you want to ignore any characters in between two different characters, or you can use a question mark to replace any single character values in your search. So for example, let's go back to our uh, report here. I'm gonna clear all the filters. And let's say this time we want to search for chai. And let's say for chai, we want, uh, we want to say anything that starts with a C or anything that has a C in its product name. And as long as that C is preceded by I, return true to me so let's uh, filter that to true so you'll see it's not just chai that it returns it returns other things as well so let's have a look at why so we know that chai will return true because c is at the beginning and i is at the end so exactly as we uh, have here however you'll see the other ones also return true um, even though it doesn't start with c uh, the combination that it's looking for is as long as there is a C and ignore any number of characters in between as long as there's an I after the C that will return as true. So that's how you would use the well, 
wildcards if you haven't used it before. So I don't really use the question mark much, but from what I understand, if let's say we want to add a question mark in there, so it basically just replaces a single character value, whereas the uh, asterisk replaces any number of values in between, the question mark uh, just looks for, uh, or just replaces any type of string just once uh, in its instance. The last iteration that I want to talk about today is the contained string execs, which pretty much does the same thing as the contained string where it finds a subset of text within a string, but there are two things to bear in mind. So first is that it's case sensitive. So unlike the first two, uh, where the uppercase or lowercase doesn't matter, using this one is explicit. So you need to have the capitalization correct. The second thing is that wildcards don't work. So let's say if we do the same thing as we did with chai or using asterisk or question marks, these will return false. So let's have a look at some examples. So I'm gonna create again uh, here a new column. So contains string exact, contains string exact. So first, we'll try to return a true value first, just to show you how it will work. Just remove the filter here. So you'll see first with the chai, it will return as true uh, because uh, the indentations or the uppercase uh, and the correct spelling matches exactly with the product name. You'll see if I change, let's say, even just the capitalization, you will see that it will return as false, even though it's the same uh, text. If we try to replace it with, let's say, the wildcard, again, it will return false because, as I said, wildcard characters won't work using this uh, iteration of the contains function. And that's really it for this video. I hope it helped you understand how easy it is to start using contains and the different variations of contains in Power BI. Thanks for watching. As usual, give this video a like if you found it useful. Give it a dislike if you didn't, so I know to do better for next time. Ask your questions in the comment section box below so I can help you and you can help others. If you really like this video, we have a Patreon page where you can support the channel and get exclusive perks like early access demo files and credits at the end of these videos. Thanks again for watching and see you in the next one. Bye-bye.